We can't wait to bring on the NBA champion, the Sirius XM NBA radio host, the Fox Sports radio host, our man Antonio Daniels. What up, brother? Fellas. <laughs> it's good to have you on, my man. How you been? Hey, How are you? Man, it's awesome to be on with you guys, man. How are you guys? We are great, brother. We are great. And wrapping up, we've wrapped up football season. So now it's full bore into the NBA. So that's why we have you on, which is great. So, man, let's get to it. Uh, New Orleans, that's the team you're, you, you're with. And they look good. They won seven of their last eight. They beat the Clippers during that stretch. I this is one thing I'm I'm saying to myself, uh, Antonio. When I look at the Western Conference standings, I'm looking at Minnesota, Oklahoma City. Those are the top two. I'm looking at New Orleans, Sacramento's eighth, but still I'll throw them in here. And I'm wondering how for real are these teams? Because they're all young, right? And yep. what type? You know, like so. What what am I going to see from them in the playoffs? So let's start with New Orleans. How convinced or not convinced are you that they're actually what they look like recently and that they're going to be a, a team that has to be reckoned with in the playoffs? I think it would be disingenuous to me to give New Orleans credit or talk about New Orleans the way that I wouldn't talk about some of the other teams. Like all the teams that you just named, we have no idea. We don't know. Right. We don't know what Oklahoma City is going to look like in the postseason. We don't know what Minnesota is going to look like in the postseason. You know, we don't know what Sacramento or New Orleans is going to look like in the postseason. You know what? Like, the thing is, um, Minnesota, and, and basically what I'm saying is the way these teams are currently constructed, right? Minnesota hasn't been out the first round the way their team is currently constructed. Patrick Beverly's not there anymore. They done made some changes along the way. You know, right. New Orleans hasn't been out the first round. Sacramento hasn't been out the first round. And Oklahoma City, the way they're currently constructed, hasn't even been to the first round. So I think it would be wrong and disingenuous to me to say, I know what to expect of these teams come postseason. Here's the thing that I found out about the postseason as a player and now as an analyst. Some guys will play better in the postseason than they do in the regular season. Other guys, it's the complete opposite. Right? And I think some of the all-time greats, we have guys that we can have this conversation about that are first ballot Hall of Famers that have been great during the regular season, but when the postseason comes around, they almost look like a shell of themselves. Did you say Because Embiid? the game starts to slow down. You can say somebody like Joel Embiid. You could say someone like James Harden. I'm talking about guys that have had right. postseason struggles. Paul yep. George. It's a lot of guys in – I know right now we're talking about the young teams of the Western Conference, but if we kind of compartmentalize this to individuals, there are a lot of individuals, and we discussed this on my Sirius XM show today, they have a lot of pressure for the postseason. Oh, oh yeah. Have a lot of pressure to perform in the postseason. So, yes, to answer your question, I'm not sure what these teams will look like come postseason, fellas. Help, help me with this and, and uh, the All-Star game. I mean, no one's uh-huh. asking uh-huh. anybody uh, to jump in the stands, to break a foot, trying to make a play. But, Antonio, that was pro- – I've been covering the league since 1987. Mm-hmm. I thought it was just god awful, and basically they gave fans the middle finger, like saying we don't care, and we don't care what you think, and we we don't care. That's what that's. It was like they were trying to prove a point. We should cancel this game because we don't want to play in it. That's what it felt like. I, I tell you the thing that I, I don't want to do anymore, and, and I, I don't want to. You know, every year it's like a cycle. You know, it's the same thing every year. Every year it's the all-star starters, and then it's the all-star reserves, and then talk shows. It's been a gang of time talking about who got snubbed, who should have made it, who didn't make it. And, like, I, you know, and I saw this so much over the past couple of days. Like, why do we care so much about it if they don't care about it? They only care about it because it's tied to their financial future. But as far right. as the game is concerned, they can care less about it. They could care. I, I'm, you know the crazy thing. We had a discussion uh, about a month ago when Luca went for 73 and Joel and B went for 70. The discussion was, do you think a player will score 100 points before a team scores 200 points? And you know <laughs> what my response was? My response was, I think a player will score 100 points because out of all of the All-Star games that ever been played, no team has ever scored 200 points in an All-Star game. 
That's never happened. So if it doesn't happen in the All-Star game, how can it possibly happen in the regular season? Lo and behold, this year they put up <laughs> 211 points. Right. So well, let I, me ask. Let me add, I don't know. Along well, those lines, Antonio, and I've said this in the past. I don't know if I've discussed it with you. But I wonder, because a lot of people are complaining. I, I haven't really complained about it. You do see a ton of blowouts in the regular season now, right? Mm-hmm. And a lot of people, though, are complaining about the high scoring in the league now. Mm-hmm. And I've said, I want, I've wondered aloud, Maybe they do they need to look at or at some point will they need to look at maybe cutting off the three point line at the free throw line extended, so, you know, at the end where the arc ends and basically you're cutting out that corner three and a little bit more. Man, of it. What, and what, listen, well, hold on. Man, let me explain because that would what bring back doing? that. I'm going to explain. It would oh. bring back post play. It would bring back mid range play and you would still have the three. Like, now you see this, Antonio. Teams, I mean, look, I'm going to give them credit because they're smart. All the analytics are telling them three, layup or dunk, or free throw. And the teams are smart, and that's what they're doing, and now the defenses can't keep up. So I'm. you sound like you would be there's against something like that, there's but what are your thoughts right on there. that? Yes, there's a problem. The last line you just said, that's my issue. That's my only issue is the fact that the defenses can't keep up. It's not the fact that they can't keep up. The rules don't allow them to keep up. Right. That's my one problem. That's, if there was one change, like, you know how the game was played in the, in the 1990s, right? Hand and checking and all, right. Playing, right. There's a, there's a happy medium that I feel like the NBA is missing. It doesn't have to go all the way back to the 1980s where – Right, you know, we don't want to see – Right. right, it's getting ring necked and, and his glasses are flying. We don't need all that, right? We don't need that. But there's a happy medium I feel like the NBA is missing. Right now, this is the most skilled generation of NBA athletes that's ever existed, in my opinion, as far as shot making is concerned. Right. Right? But here's the thing they have more help than they need. So when you have the skill to be able to shoot from distance from the logo with efficiency and accuracy, and now the defense can't do any – I can't even contest because if right. I get too close, now with the flagrant one, like the, the defense doesn't have any chance to legitimately stop anybody. And yep. I'm not with all these changes to the game. I'm not with all this, man. Like It's like we're just continuing to, to cave and cater to this generation. Let's take away the three-point line. Let's give them a million dollars to play. Let's right. move all back to back. It's like, come on, man. Like – Guys have played through this stuff forever. Why now in 2024 do we want to change every possible rule to make it easier for the player in today's generation? I, I, it I, drives I, me berserk. No, I agree I, with that. I agree, and the game isn't as enjoyable. I mean, I just – I don't want to see, Antonio, just people firing up shots. I, I, I covered – I covered – I know nobody wants to see – the Pistons from 2004. I get that. Now, we're not talking about going back to that. But, Antonio, what I loved about that team was that they used to get stops at the end of games to win. Mm-hmm. Do you know what I mean? Like, I, 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 I enjoyed it. I, I, I enjoyed played, stops. I played on the Everything's San better with Spurs resistance. Teams. Right. I played on the San Antonio Spurs team. That was called boring. Yep. Because they played the right way. They played the game the right way. It was called boring. And y'all and were. Yeah, no question playing. about I'm it. No question about it. But here's the thing. They were boring for 20 years. Right. And that was the blueprint. That was the blueprint for the NBA. That was the blueprint. So now, as opposed to being boring and successful, we would rather see a, a, a botched product as long as it's entertaining. Let, let, and, let's, let's end here before you got to go. Um, we got about a minute. Um, you do you call games for the Pelicans, Zion? Mm-hmm. Um, numbers are a little down. They're still good, but they're a little down. But I feel like in a lot of ways he's playing better. Is that a is that a fair statement? I think he's gotten better as his season has, has come along. Yes, that's safe to say. You know what? You know how you can tell how Zion's playing because listen to the media noise around him. That's how you can always tell when he's playing well. It's really quiet. Right. 
It is really quiet. You don't hear people taking shots at him. You don't hear people taking jabs at him. But the moment that he struggles on national TV is when all hell breaks loose. But I'll, right. I'll but say this. playing well, I'm saying, I'm sorry. No, I'll say this, though. Zion, and I get it, he's been banged up and all that, and now we got to go. But you don't hear that much about him. Like, I, I'm surprised at from where he was supposed to be profile-wise, the next hotness or whatever, uh, to, to almost nothing. Like, you just say, That'll come like, when he's season. playing well, people yeah, are going to win it him. back. That'll come in the postseason. Okay. That, that, that's where all that happens. You know, the but thing you know is, what I'm Pelicans, saying. Like, there's I, just I no exactly buzz for him. Saying. Right. I know exactly what you're saying. But when a, a lot of this, legacies are made in the postseason, not in right. the regular season. Right. You know, we, we're having this conversation now in February. If we're having a completely different conversation the second and third week of April, let's revisit this. Because that's when the talk really begins. That's when everything right. is, is, is blown up.